So we're here in Bally Kinsella. That's right. Talk to me about the, the view we're looking at there, Eamon. Oh, gosh, you're looking right over at Brownstown Head and the back strand and all down along there. It's, it's, uh, it's about, what, about three quarters of a mile from here. It's a lovely, lovely place here. Lovely place on a fine day, wild place on a, on a wet day. So we're on a kind of an elevated area, kind of a hillside here. And uh, So what are we opening up here? This is the crematorium room itself, then. Oh, my goodness. And it's not reported anymore. This is, it's, it's, it's actually here. Wow. Okay, my goodness. Look at this. This is the first one in County Waterford. There is actually planning for another crematorium, but it's for human beings. We can't do humans. We only do pet animals here. The machine came in from the UK. Uh, so it's a green machine. It says yeah. pet, 200 pet 200 on the side of it. It's uh, like, a big, like a big oven, like something like a big... Like a big pizza oven, an elongated pizza <laughs> oven. Everybody, you're not the first one to say that. Am I not? I know, I'm not to be How else would you describe it? What would you describe it as? I, I, I tell you what it is, it's, uh, it's very expensive and it's very heavy. That's, that's, that's what it is, you know. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the only one of its kind in the country. Uh, it's designed to be about 60% more efficient than anything that's in the country, uh, on, on fuel-wise. And far cleaner to, to, to run as well. You, no smoke, no fumes, nothing out of this machine. So, Connor, we're in a kind of a low, slatted, an old outhouse, I'd say, a kind of a farmhouse. This uh, actually used to be for greyhounds. And if you can see in here, this would be, our, I suppose, our viewing room as such. This was a wall for, for greyhounds here. And then there was a few kennels, and um, you can kind of see on the wall there. Yeah. So, really, really, it was an ideal spot um, that we found. But um, here we have the viewing room, I suppose. Um, not exactly the finished article yet. Um, I'll, I'll show you there now soon. But uh, from here... People will actually be able to see um, an empty crematorium, which is what we're all about. We want to make sure that people have a fully transparent service um, that they can actually view as much or as little of the process as they want. From here, we'll have a curtain that'll come across. Somebody can stand in there, watch their pet um, be individually cremated. Eamon, what have you got here? It's kind of like a, a trolley that you might it see is, in a hospital. It is. It's very, very similar. It's, it's, a, it's a hydraulic lift and trolley with a stainless steel top. Uh, the pet is brought in here. After being, you know, after we have uh, taken control of the animal, we normally give it a, a little groom and clean it up and all if, if, if necessary. You know, most pets that will come in here will be in good condition. He's placed on the trolley. The trolley then, I, I roll it in, it just makes a little bit of noise. But that's the trolley. It goes, the trolley goes right into the, into the middle of the oven and the pet then is pushed off in, into the, the oven. Trolley comes back, door is closed. Door is slammed shut. The machine, the, the machine then does everything itself. After. Okay, so the actual crematorium it says incinerate, cremate, add field. It's over from from the UK. From the UK, it's around what size is it? Are we talking eight it's, by it's, six? It's it's eight foot long. It's it's uh, just under five, just on, just under six foot uh, tall, and it's four foot six wide. Plate steel made with and, and then lined with with with, uh, with bricks. There's actually three chambers in it. The main chamber is where the is where the animal goes. Underneath, then there's a, a, a another another set of burners that actually heat the floor of the, of the of the of the machine. And then there's a there's another burner then down at the back. You can see it there. See the hole in the back of it. Yeah. That's where the exhaust gases go out, and they're burned again. So the the, the gas is actually burned three times before it goes into the into the atmosphere. I'd say it cost a few bob. Brexit damn near killed us now, to be honest. But uh, you're looking at uh, about thirty five thousand for uh, this and uh, the, the other machine just 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 on the just on, on on machinery why connor a pet crematorium i suppose it started really from our own experience we had a, a great dane and um, his name was mason he was a bit of a celebrity out in tremor but um, we actually had to get him uh, put to sleep last year um on the, the 18th of march last year i'll never forget it but I guess just at the time, even though we knew it was, it was, he was going to be put to sleep, it was still a bit of a shock to us that he was put to sleep, you know. Brought him into the pet hospital, into Tyke McTiernan, and they ended up putting him to sleep anyway. But uh, I think just at that moment in time, we weren't, given, we weren't given enough options that we were satisfied with. I think it was going to be about four or five weeks, I think, before he would actually be returned to us if we did actually go down the cremation route. All this started, I suppose, at the start of the lockdown, so there was a lot of time to, <laughs> to think about it. Dad turned around and said, we'll start the pet crematorium, and here we are. Are there many other pet crematoriums in Ireland? 
There's only uh, six. This is the sixth licensed one in the country. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a process now. It's it's a long hard process to actually get the license to do it from from the Department of Agriculture. The amount of farm filling I had to do and 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 reports on everything from rodent control, bird control, all these different plans had to emissions. Everything had to had had to go into the Department of Agriculture to get the license. Then they have to come and say that building is okay. Or I travelled all over the place looking for looking for a suitable building, and this place was three hundred fifty yards away from the house. I didn't know. Do you know? So this is an out. This is a, a neighbour's farm or it's a neighbouring farm. Neighbouring yeah. farm. Yeah, it's a neighbouring farm. How quickly, Connor? I can't put this any other way. How quickly does it take to to burn a pet? That depends on the size of the pet, really. Um, like we can take a tortoise, or we can take up to uh, an Irish wolf. I think we're licensed up to 150 kgs. So I mean, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big. You dog, can't burn you know? a horse or a pony because it's too. Could you do a pony? Could you do a pony? Yeah, do a small pony and if you can get into it. But the thing, the machine, that machine is certified to burn at 50. Uh, kilos an hour so therefore if you had a, a good big Labrador he'd be coming in say at 40, 45 so an hour and 20 minutes an hour and 20 minutes and gone yeah and obviously the people wouldn't stay watching the entire process they might stay for a few minutes well we're not we're not licensed nor insured to do that so I mean from there say people will be able to people will be able to view their animal going in just to make sure that it is an individual cremation for that peace of mind. But over here, eventually what we're going to end up doing, we have another, uh, we have another shed over there that we're going to convert into a farewell room so that people will be able to actually come down. Um, we'll like the dog in repose so that they can have or their animal or whatever. They can have a look, spend a bit of time before it actually goes in to be cremated. And again, it's just that other little bit of Another little element of the service that we thought that we, we would have liked at when, when, when we got our eighth grade day and put to sleep. What are we looking at on the walls there? There's uh, some clothes hanging. Are these the, the, these are the sort of, they look like firemen outfits, old firemen outfits. Are yeah. these the outfits you'd use when you're... When the door opens on this machine and it's running, right, you're looking at uh, 750 degrees on the floor inside in that. So you don't just walk up to that. That's, that's a serious blast of heat that, that, that comes out of it. So you have to have you have to wear protective gear to 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 work around the machine. Then when it, when the machine is closed and it actually starts to to to, to run, we're looking at maybe nine hundred degrees coming out the coming out the back. You need good gear to 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 work around it. It's a furnace. If I have a little uh, Jack Russell, how much will it cost me to get him cremated compared to a big Labrador? Well, a miniature breed, so say a miniature Jack Russell, say, or a miniature Yorkshire Terrier or whatever, that would start at €150 Euro for that would be cremated and returned. So we'll start from €150, Euro, say, up to 420 for a, a giant breed. So that would be like a wolf founder or a Great Dane or something like that. And does that include the cost of the urn? Would it be an urn? All of our cremations are going to come with either a wooden casket, so that that's an option for people if they want to leave their pet on the, on the mantelpiece at home or whatever. And um, They'll have an option then of a, of a scatter tube too, so... Some people might want to scatter the ashes where they walk the dog, maybe on the beach or whatever. Like, you know, so th- the option is there for the two of them. Um, we also have a shop on our website as well that if you want to upgrade and get some different keepsakes or a different urn or whatever, like um, that's all available there as well on our website. There is a priority option as well. So if people want to have some people might not like the idea of leaving their pet in the vets for whatever reason. So we can actually do it within a day as well. So but that's a, that's a priority service that we'll offer them too. Eamon, are you a religious man? Some people of religious bent would not be in favour of cremation of humans. What about animals and pets? Does it, well, like... I mean, it depends on, on your religious persuasion, doesn't it? I mean... Uh, the Hindus would be... The Hindus have to see the cremation, the full cremation, yeah. because that's, you know, your ancestor is in, is, 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 yeah. is, is in the animal or whatever it is, because they have the belief that you'll always come back as something else. In, from my own experience with Mason, we ordered to him to look after him, you know. And, and I think if, if you get the dog thing, you get the dog thing. If you don't understand the dog and love, and, and love your pet, you, you'll never get this, do you know. But, but is it not better to bury a dog or a cat? No, it's not. Why not? Well, look, first of all, unless you're... In, not well, you're not allowed. That's, you know, if you, you, there's, there's all kinds of measurements now. I think it's 20 metres from, from a boundary fence, 20 metres from, from uh, the neighbours, 20 metres from a septic tank, a water course. There's all kinds of measurements. Not so much in Ireland at the moment, I haven't brought it in, but a lot of the European countries now have a €10,000 fine for burying your dog in your garden. 
It's only a matter of time before before that comes in here. And you know? uh, what about a pet cemetery? Yeah, that's something we can look at as well. We actually have a bit of space out there that we might. It's 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 something that we we might look into in the future. Um, go full build. Go for full, full build. hog. Why not? And I mean, Why as not? Like the, the, <laughs> well. yes, we have we have we have little over a quarter of an acre of, of grass outside. Well, we will have when the grass grows. We're going to allow people if if people with balconies, people in apartments, if they want to scatter the ashes there, off you go. Work away. Do you know we're actually going to provide that as well for people as well. You don't need a license to scatter ashes if somebody no, wants to throw no. ashes of uh, a dead. They're completely inert. Alsatian. They're completely inert. Now, th- obviously, the council would have a problem if you start to mount up with tons of ashes. Like, th- uh, there'd be a little bit of a problem there, but only on, on, on a one-off basis. Yeah, but if you're walking yeah, underneath the apartment, and you get ashes exactly, in your head. Exactly. And, yeah, that, that might go and uh, right. obviously, in terms of giving the ashes back, a lot of the ashes wouldn't be going into the urn. It would only, or the cask, it would only be a certain amount. What do you do with the rest of the ashes? No, it's all, no, it's all, all the ashes. What happens with the machine? You need an awfully big casket if you have no, a great day. No, no, five percent. Huh? Five percent. Burns it down to five percent. Oh, that's the same for ourselves. Like that's you, really? you, you end up at five percent. Five percent of your oh, your oh, body oh. is completely burned. Yes. And you only get five percent left. Yes. And what so what have we got here? We take out the we take out the the the, the, the ash out of the machine. It goes into this machine, which is basically it's basically a, it's a, it's just a, a blender. <coughs> And if you can look inside that, you can see there's a there's a, a sharp blade down in down yeah. in that. You put on the lid. You just you, you run the machine for it's like a smoothie maker. It is like a smoothie it's maker. Like a smoothie maker. Yeah. Yeah. And you run the machine, and then the ashes come down into the bowl here or into the casket. Yeah. Down into the bowl. Into the, there. You tip it in, and that's and, it. And that's yeah. it. And you have. You and there's have your there's roughly, Fido there's Fido gone to heaven. Roughly it. roughly five percent. My goodness. You mean the caskets are... We should have bought, we should have bought a casket for the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're six, seven inches long, three inches wide, five inches high. Is there any pet you can't burn? You mentioned the tortoise. The snakes, everything. Anything. 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 A lot of people would still have this... There'd be an to the idea of, yeah. of burning from our, a living being who's died. From, our, from my perspective, like when we had to bury Mason in, in, in our garden, I mean, I didn't like the thoughts of him being in the ground. So it's all, it's all yeah. you know, it's, it's your perspective really and what you think. And I mean, if you, can, if, you're, if you want to have ashes brought back, at least you'll have a little keepsake on the mantelpiece or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Some people would... It, it, different strokes are different folks really, isn't it? That's to, the, to be honest, Damien, humour and cremation is fast becoming the norm. Mm. And there's, there's very, very good reasons for not for not having large cemeteries in future. It's just not going to be allowed. Uh, and this is just a, 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 another, another step on that road. And in Ireland, we're only, we're only starting uh, to, to, to get used to the idea. In the UK, most animals are, are, are created. Most adults, most humans are cremated as well. So it's just, it's, it'll happen here too, you know. Have you done your market research? Is there a market there for... There's a big market. I mean, there's... Uh, my, my research, I think I came up with there was 475,000 licensed dogs in this country. Not to count all the ones that aren't licensed and run around the place. And it'll be mainly dogs, I presume. You'd be looking maybe... No, cats, dogs, cats, gerbils... Dogs. Rabbits, you name it. Gerbils. Uh, why would you spend money on, like, how much would a gerbil cost? You'd have to give a discount on a little gerbil. A uh, gerbil would be about 30 or 40 euro, depending if you want the ashes back, I suppose. <laughs> he'd go in, in he'd, go in he'd go in last anyway, that'd be the first thing. Oh, you wouldn't, you, he wouldn't be using you much fuel. You wouldn't do two for the price of one or anything like no, that. No, 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 none of that. But it's a, it's a, I mean, it's I, a serious matter because an awful lot of people matter, yeah. love their yeah. pets. That's the thing, like, and you'll either, you'll either get this or you won't, like, and it's not, it's not, it's probably not for, probably not for every pet owner either you know what I mean but there are people that, like we set this up based on our personal experience and I know we're not the only ones a funny one for you I came into our kitchen one day five six years ago to found my wife very upset at the kitchen table I said what's wrong you know and she said I, I, I'm just after been thinking about the day the dog dies I said Jesus girl I said I could be dead long before the, the dog you know and she said, I'd get another man, but I'd never get another dog like that. So where do you go? I mean, that's, that's, that's the attitude a lot, a lot of people have. What's your good wife's name? Harriet, the long-suffering Harriet. She's she after putting up with a lot now from the two of us over the last 12 months. Have you considered cremation yourself when you go? Definitely. Definitely. Not I in don't. here, though. You no. Know. Anyway, we'll leave it on Harriet's happy thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need when you open for business? Uh, we're actually open now. Um, you can check us out on www.restingpets.ie. Um, we have we're on Resting Pets. Resting Pets.ie. Um, we're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Resting Pets Waterford. So yeah, check us out. Give us a call.